video, the worst of the worst, the bad habits that have actually people in medical literature. Ok guys, today's video is going to be an interesting one. When it comes to kidney health, bad habits are everything. What you do constantly, day after day, really makes a difference on your health. And that's why I always focus on good habits here. Reminding people to do the right thing is my way of trying to help. And it's also important to know what bad habits we should identify and stop. But while some bad habits can cause harm over time, there are also bad habits that can actually you in a few months, sometimes weeks. Even worse, some of these bad habits look way, way less dangerous than they actually are. This is what we are going to see today. We will see not just one, but three different stories from the ER today. And we are going to learn about three people that didn't know they were risking everything until it was too late. Our goal is to learn from their mistakes so we don't repeat them. Let's start with our first case study. Like all the case studies I present you here, this is based on events that really happen and that are documented in literature. In 2017, a 30-year-old man was brought to the emergency department. We will call him N.T. N.T had severe nausea and hadn't been able to keep anything down at all for five days. But his chief complaint was more serious. Auntie also told the staff that he was worried about the salad he had eaten one week prior. Auntie had heard recently on the news about the danger of a foodborne pathogen and it was from a kind of lettuce similar to what he had in his salad. But he ignored the warning. I mean, many people would have done the same. It's a fact that there are so many frightening headlines on the news today that people are starting to lose their trust in medias. But sometimes the medias are right and the danger is real. And this is what happened to NT. After being admitted to the ER, the staff asked Auntie for a sample of urine. Auntie was very pale and was clutching his stomach in pain when he told the staff he couldn't remember the last time he urinated. A test confirmed the worst was happening. Many of the wastes that are supposed to be filtered by his kidneys were floating around in his body at levels several times higher than normal. His creatinine was 8.4 mg per dl, meaning that he was rapidly approaching renal failure. But how can a simple salad have caused him all this? We have to go back one week and learn more about his salad. In 2017, the IDSA investigated the surge of cases of hospitalization due to a serious pathogen, E. coli, in romaine lettuce. And it actually made the headlines, but many people were still going to ignore it. In fact, despite knowing about the danger, Auntie decided to make himself a Caesar salad with lettuce. But he didn't like to cook too often, so instead of eating the whole salad in one sitting, he left some of the counter for dinner. And then there were leftovers the day after that he decided to finish, even if it wasn't looking too appetizing. Letting contaminated food sitting for too long can undoubtedly pave the way for catastrophe, as poor Auntie was going to learn soon. 
But how can a foodborne illness damage the kidneys of a previously healthy man so badly? Well, the answer is something called shigatoxin. Shigatoxin is a type of protein exotoxin produced by certain strains of bacteria, including some types of E. coli, such as E. coli 0157H7. Let's imagine these harmful substances as a tool E. coli uses against certain cells of the body. The toxin attaches to the outside of a cell and then it manages to get inside. Once it's inside, it causes a big mess. In this case, it stops the cell from making new proteins, which are crucial for the cell's survival. Without new proteins, the cell can't function properly and eventually dies. Now, this may happen in various parts of the body, but it really causes trouble in the kidneys. The kidneys have many receptors this substance can bind to. Inside the kidneys, the toxin causes inflammation, which is like internal swelling and death of the cells. This all results in the kidneys not being able to do their job, a condition called hemolytic uremic syndrome, HUS. This is characterized by kidney failure, hemolytic anemia, and thrombocytopenia, low platelet count. E. coli 0157H7 is what the staff eventually found in Antti's body. And they knew this can be life-threatening. We will see how it ended for poor Antti in a moment. Before that, a very important question. What can you do to make sure your food is safe? We all know that people with kidney issues are more at risk for the dangers linked to foodborne illnesses. There are a few steps you can take to significantly reduce your risk. Let's see them. Wash your hands. Always wash your hands before handling food. And also, clean surfaces and utensils. Ensure your kitchen surfaces and utensils are clean before you start cooking. And this also helps with Avoiding cross-contamination. Always keep raw meat, poultry, seafood, and their juices away from ready-to-eat foods. Speaking of meat and poultry, if you eat them, cook them thoroughly. And also, wash fruits and vegetables thoroughly. Rinse all fruits and vegetables under running water before eating, cutting, or cooking them. You can also use a baking soda bath. And obviously, refrigerate promptly. Never leave perishable foods out of the refrigerator for more than one or two hours. Also, stay informed about food recalls. Pay attention to news about food recalls and foodborne illnesses. Don't ignore them like NT did. How did it end for NT? Guys, if you like this video so far, consider sharing it with anyone you know you think may be interested. Also, leave a like if you want. After being admitted to the ER, anti kidneys were found to be severely impaired. The staff was able to find out the cause. E. coli. What can you do for E. coli? They could have given him antibiotics, but they didn't. Many antibiotics can be nephrotoxic when there is an acute kidney injury going on. And in this case, it looked like the benefit did not outweigh the risk. So they gave him fluids and kept watching him closely. It was a good call. As the days pass, Antti finally makes urine again. At discharge, his kidneys appeared to function almost as they did before, which is a very good outcome in a situation like this. Our protagonist, Antti, was lucky, but foodborne illnesses are not something we should take risks with. Like the next medical mystery for today. And while the takeaway from our first story is a simple one, don't be sloppy with your food. Our next protagonist is going to do a mistake that's not as easy to avoid because she took her health seriously and tried to improve it. But she forgot one thing. In 2018, a healthy 24-year-old, 18 weeks postpartum woman, we called her OL, presented to the emergency department with severe nausea. She was unable to keep any food down. 
While in the emergency department, she developed abdominal pain, low back cramps, and a general feeling of discomfort. She also had a very high heart rate at 103 beats per minute. She looked like she was out of breath, even while just sitting. Now guys, the way OL presented at the ER is peculiar enough for a case study to be written about her. It's not common at all that someone that was previously in perfectly good conditions is now hospitalized with tachypnea, rapid breathing. This is a sign that something very bad is happening in her body. Let's see if the staff will able to catch it in time. Tests are done and few things catch our interest here. OL low levels of serum bicarbonate, a substance that helps keep the body's pH levels balanced. This is a sign of metabolic acidosis, a dangerous condition. She also had high levels of beta-hydroxybutyric acid, a substance that the body produces when it's burning fat for energy. Another sign that her body was burning fat for energy is the high levels of ketones she had. Third thing here is the protein in urine. Whatever is happening is damaging her kidneys. But why? What can cause metabolic acidosis and kidney damage in a previously healthy woman? OL is now being questioned about her eating habits by the staff. She tells them proudly that she was able to lose 25 pounds after the birth of her child in just 18 weeks. How? they ask. Well, by eating a lot of vegetables, cheese, chicken, salmon, and other white fish, she says. And also by strictly avoiding grains like wheat, pasta, and bread. This is a fat diet that was very popular back in 2018. Yes, you probably already got this. She was following the keto diet. A very dangerous fat diet, especially for a new mom. How can a fat diet cause these issues in a previously healthy woman? There is one thing here that was especially worrisome. The fast deep breathing in someone who is not doing any kind of physical activity. This is caused by the extremely acidity OL had in her body. And one of the ways the human body can compensate for that is by breathing faster. This is a condition called non-diabetic ketoacidosis, which in this case was completely caused by the keto diet. Okay, but how did this happen? Now, the ketogenic diet alone is not going to cause ketoacidosis in most of the cases, but there are a few categories of people that are more at risk for this dangerous condition. Diabetics are always recommended to avoid the keto diet exactly due to this issue, but also nursing moms, just like OL. You see, there have been several reports of ketoacidosis occurring in nursing women on keto diets. When a woman is nursing, her body uses extra energy to produce milk. This means she needs more fuel, so her body might burn more fat, producing more ketones. If she's not eating enough carbs and her body is already in a state of burning fats from the keto diet, this can push her into ketoacidosis. It's not common, but it can happen, and it warns us about the risks of following a fat diet. How it ended for OL? She was given IV fluids and insulin, and also glucose to help her body switch back to using glucose for energy instead of fat. She was also put back on a diet that included carbohydrates. She was allowed to continue nursing her baby and her condition improved quickly once she started eating carbohydrates again. She was discharged after 4 days and her follow-up tests showed normal levels of all substances. So she had a happy ending at last. And the keto diet is bad but it's not the only fat diet that can put your life in danger. This is especially true for someone with previously documented health problems such as diabetes or kidney disease. Never start a diet you hear about on the internet without consulting a registered dietitian. This story tells us how bad it can be to make changes to our way of eating without being informed. So don't make this mistake and make sure your eating plan is a safe one.
And even though OL made a risky mistake, believe it or not, things could get even messier. This is what our last story for today is all about. Okay, I've kept the most disturbing for last. This is one of the worst bad habits someone could develop. Fact, many people get several different medicines from several different specialists. And one of the worst dangers you face when taking anything is the risk for interactions. Certain medicines are reasonably safe when taken alone, but they may be extremely dangerous when taken together. Let's make sure you are not doing the mistake of not double checking that everything you take is safe and free from interactions. And I know that there are professional figures whose entire job revolves around checking this for you. But do they always do that efficiently enough? In 2014, a 79-year-old lady with a history of hypertension and arthritis, but otherwise healthy, suddenly found herself in the ER due to intense stomach discomfort. We will call her EP. After a close look by the resident, she was sent home with a list of medicines for her problem, which was a simple UTI, easy to treat in someone without any kidney issue. She was given a strong antibiotic and some NSAIDs for the discomfort. Her kidney numbers were all in the normal range, so the resident wasn't really worried. However, he made a tragic mistake. He didn't check the newly prescribed medicines for possible interactions. About a week later, Ibi's health took a turn for the worse. She lost her appetite felt weak and her face started swelling up. She was quickly taken back to the ER. It was discovered that she was suffering from heart failure and she had fluid buildup in her chest. Her kidney numbers had shut up, indicating severe kidney damage. Despite the best efforts of the hospital staff, her health didn't improve. Sadly, she passed away just 13 days later. Her story is a chilling reminder of how quickly things can go wrong when taking multiple medications without appropriate research. So, what was EB taking that shouldn't have been mixed together with the newly prescribed NSAID? Well, if the resident took the time to check EP history properly, they would have quickly found out that she was taking furosemide and ramipril. Mixing up these three things is a huge error. This is something known today as triple whammy. Each of these three individually can affect the function of the kidneys. When used together, they may lead to a significant decrease in kidney function and acute kidney injury. And like what happened to EP, this risk may be even higher in the elderly or in those with existing kidney problems. And while one may think that things changed from 2014, more than 1,000 cases of triple whammy are documented every year and many of the people affected don't make it. So be careful out there and make sure you are well aware of possible unwanted effects and interaction every single time a new entry is present in your regime. Yes, there are professional figures supposed to do that, but they also make mistakes, so stay safe and get informed. And if you want to learn more about the dangers related to some of the most common medicines, watch my video up here and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.